Hello and thank you for joining us today here at Evangelist Crusaders Church Sunday morning worship. We're so happy that you decided to stay a while with us and worship the Lord. We want to let you know that we are on location at 4307 4th Avenue South in Minneapolis. Or if you prefer to watch this webcast in the comfort of your home or your car, wherever you might be viewing it, feel free to go to our avenues where we are lifting this broadcast and enjoy it right along with us week to week. You can pull it up at our website, www.evangelistcrusaders.com. You could also pull us up on Facebook and YouTube at Evangelist Crusaders Church. Now, you know, we have been so blessed by those of you who have been supporting us down through these many months with your prayer support and your financial gifts. And we just want to say thank you and God bless you. Invite you to continue to give if you so desire to do so. Go to our Givelify app, which is located on our web page. There is a link conveniently there for you. Or you can download the Givelify app to your phone. You can find us at Evangelist Crusaders. And our address is 4307 4th Avenue South. We have also been blessed by the written correspondence that some of you have sent. It blesses us to know that this ministry is being a blessing to you. So if you prefer the written word, feel free to address all of your correspondence to Evangelist Crusaders Church, Post Office Box 7291, Minneapolis, Minnesota, the zip code is 55407. We've been so encouraged by all of those of you who have been worshiping right along with us in-house and on the web, and we want to just say that we are praying for you to be encouraged and have hope. Now we're going to go directly into the Word of God at this time. Listen and be blessed. else doesn't matter amen and in the midst of the storm he was right there in the lonely nights shedding tears and crying he was right there when I was concerned about this child or that child he was right there hallelujah I've learned to trust in God I've learned to depend on God hallelujah have we learned to depend on God no matter what may come or what may go no matter how tall the mountain is hallelujah I'm ready to climb that mountain glory to God because my faith will see me through and no matter how deep the valley is been in some hurt been in some pain been in some disappointment saints of God but he's carried me through and what the, the scripture says on eagle's wing and I heard Reverend Shirley say that that about that dwelling in the secret place of the most high I'm not just saying that I'm dwelling in the secret place or you're not just saying you're dwelling in a secret place but this is a 24 hour seven days a week time that you're dwelling in his secret place. And when he said, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. And we will say of the Lord, he's our refuge and our strength, our God, and in him will we trust. Let's look to the Lord. Father in heaven, in the mighty and most precious name of Jesus, I thank you for this time to be able to elaborate on your word and encourage your people, oh God. I pray that you would have your way. I pray that you would be glorified and that you would ma be magnified. And I pray that this word will help someone along the way. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Can I get an amen? Jeremiah, the 32nd chapter. And if I could title this message, I would say, is there anything too hard for God? I would say to trust in the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the reason why I'll be talking about Jeremiah today is because he stood and he did some things that he even had to question himself, was that the right thing to do? But he sought the Lord God Almighty. And I'd like to read the scripture, Jeremiah 32, 27, and I'll be reading from the King James Version. And it reads as follows, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? 
my question to you, is there anything too hard for God? And in chapter 32, Jeremiah is in prison in Jerusalem. He's the, and Jerusalem is under siege by Nebuchadnezzar. The land had been captured due to their sins. And so due to their sin, um, they, that God was going to just tear the city down. He was going to destroy the city. Because, and just to give them, to name a few, the God's people was worshiping other gods rather than the almighty God. They set up idols in the temple. You're talking about the household of faith defiling God's house. They would sacrifice their sons and daughters to this God, Molik. This, and God was not happy with this. The Bible says, thou shalt not kill, amen, and thou shalt worship no other gods. God abhors sin. And see, sin is what separates us from God. And God was angry at his people. So he was taking everything out. He wanted, but he promised them that he would restore this city. And so I'm not going to be talking about sin today. I'm going to be talking about trusting God. I'm going to be talking about how we as people of God should trust him, how we as believers should trust him, and, and, and how God forgives us, you know, for the wrong that we've done. He, re, he will re forgive all mankind for the wrong they have done. Scripture says, as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. The scripture says that God forgets. <laughs> he forgets all of our sins. And so here in this passage of scripture and in this chapter here, God was going to forgive them and he was going to heal their land and he was going to restore their land. But this is what happened. Je Je Zedekiah, he puts uh, Jeremiah in prison for telling him to surrender to the enemy. He says, surrender to them. You're not going to win. It's, it's, don't even try. Just, just, just give up. But Zedekiah, got, the king, got mad at him and put him in prison in the palace. And so um, in Israel, Judah's darkest history, while Jeremiah's in prison, God uses a man to speak to him to sell him some land. And this land, here they are outside. They're fighting. They've already seized the land. They've already taken it. And Jeremiah, he buys the land. Why would he buy this property during a war? Why would he buy property that was a war zone? God will tell us to do things some, sometime when other people won't understand. God will tell us to do something where you, you might even ask yourself, God, was that you? And you will go back to God. Well, why did he buy this property? Because God told him to buy it. And it was to show the people that he believed God when he said that they were going to return to this land. And they did because God is a God of his word. Whatever you're going through with today, know that God is a God of his word. So Jeremiah did this transition in front of all the officials. And then he, he after he had purchased the land, then he... He, he, he gave the deed and the land property to uh, the secretary, which was a scribe. I believe his name was Baruch. And he takes it, and when he takes this, Jeremiah tells him to wrap this up in, in the pottery and seal it up real good and save this, <coughs> pardon me, uh, for many years. That's what he said. And he said, save this. And I'm going to read that in chapter 32, 15, what he said. After he gave it to him, he said, For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, houses and fields, vineyards shall be possessed again in this land. That was enough there to jump up and shout and give God some glory. And Jeremiah obeyed, and he did everything that he was supposed to do. Amen? So, and then he told Baruch, which was the scribe and the secretary, that, Everything is going to return to normal. In a time of war, in a time of chaos, and in a time you would think the people would have been selling land rather th than, than buying land in a war zone and, and that had already been captured, and, th and, and they seized it, and they were locked in. But Jeremiah had a question. 
and it was, it was too hard for him to answer. During all, the, he he began to think, did I did I do the right thing? And wait a minute, hold on, what did I just do? He thought about it after, and then he said, well, I just brought land in a war zone. He went to God, and Jeremiah brings this question to God. He didn't bring this question to anybody else. He went to the source. He went to God himself who told him that everything was going to be returned to normal. Jeremiah's faith kicked in, but yet still he had just a little bit of doubt there wondering if he had made the right decision. Have you made the right decision today in your situation? Huh? Well, praise the Lord. But I want to read this prayer because this prayer is so touching because Jeremiah is reminding God in his time of doubt, in his time of wondering, did I do the right thing? So he goes to God and he talks to God about it. And I want to read Jeremiah 32, starting at verse 16. And this is the prayer of Jeremiah. It says, now when I had delivered the evidence of the purchase unto Baruch, the son of Neriah, I prayed unto the Lord, saying, Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power and stretched out hand, and there is nothing too hard for thee. He's acknowledging nothing's too hard for you, God. Even though I think I made the right decision here, and I knew it was you, but then I had some little, like, I, I don't know. I, I hope it was right. Please forgive me, God, for making this choice in a buying land in a war zone, but, 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 but I need you, God, but I'm sorry if I made the wrong choice, all right? Verse 18, thou sheweth love and kindness unto thousands and recompenses the iniquity of the fathers into the bosom of their children after them. The great, the mighty God, the Lord of hosts is his name. Great in counsel and mighty in work for thine eyes are open upon all the ways of the sons of men to give everyone according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing which has set signs and wonders in the land of Egypt even unto this day and in Israel and among other men and has made thee a name as at this day and has brought forth thy people Israel out of the land of Egypt with signs and with wonders and with a strong hand and with a stretched out arm and with great terror and has given them this land which Thou didst swear to their fathers to give them a land flowing with milk and honey. And they came in and possessed it, but they obeyed not thy voice, neither walked in thy way. They have done nothing of all that thou commandest them to do. Therefore thou hast caused all this evil to come upon them. Behold the mount, they came unto the city to take it, and the city is given into the hand of the Chaldeans that fight against thee because of the sword and of the famine and of the pestilence and what thou hast spoken is come to pass. And behold, thou seest it. And thou hast said unto me, now listen to this. Now he's saying, and thou hast said unto me, O Lord God, buy thee the field for money and take witnesses for the city is given into the hand of the Chaldeans. Then came here, God is speaking to him as he's praying to him. He took his question to God in prayer. And so here it is, verse 26. Then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah, saying, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Hallelujah. So Jeremiah is reminding God of the miracles that have taken place as well as reminding himself about the miracles that has taken place. He's encouraging himself as he's remembering what God has did. And then he, God says, is there anything too hard for me? I can restore the city. I can restore it. I can restore it. Just believe me. Just trust me because I am the God of all flesh. There's nothing impossible for me. All I need you to do is believe me. All I need you to do is trust me. All I need you to do is have faith in me. Hallelujah. All he wants us to do is know that he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we may ask or think. Amen. 
God will see us through because he restored the city eventually. But he abhorred their sin. They didn't trust God. They, every time God would speak to them, they would turn their head away from him. Mm. They would turn their face against God. And they would do these sins repetitiously. And to set up an a, 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 a idol in the, the household of faith, the temple of God, Wow, how can anybody do such a detestable thing in God's house? God's house is a refuge. His house is a place where you can come and get rejuvenated. His presence is in his house, but they overrode his presence, and they did what they wanted to do. But yet and still, God still loved them with an undying love. He's nothing like man. Man will hold your past present, but God will forget your sins. God will forget the wrong things that you've done don't let the enemy come to you and say well you know you did this and you know you did that and remember you did this and remember you snatched years ago that old lady's purse and oh and you're feeling bad and then forgot about all this stuff but he brings the past present we have to let go and know that God is the great I am. He is the great I am. There's nothing impossible. He is that light that shineth in the darkness, amen? And he'll be there. because He'll be a very present help in our lives in a time of need. We have to press in no matter what the devil say, no matter what he manifests to us, no matter what he brings to us and try to pull us down. He is a liar, he wants to see God's people beat down and oppressed and knocked out and drug out. God wants us to have love, joy, and peace. He loves us with an undying love. Here, Jeremiah, he's no hypocrite. Just because he felt like, wait a minute, did I make the wrong decision here? It's a war going on. He still trusted his God throughout. He went to God and he talked to, had a little talk with Jesus. He knew Jesus would make it all right, y'all. He had a little talk with Jesus, and God spoke to him back. He didn't give him a deaf ear, hallelujah, but he spoke and told him, I am the God of all flesh. Listen, this God created the heavens and the earth and all that in them is. This God said, let there be light, and there was light. Hey, this earth was without form and it was void and darkness was upon the face of the deep but God created everything look around you he even gave the scientists and the people that need to know how to do lights and all that he gave them that wisdom it all came from God he's the one that created the sun the moon and the stars the universe he is the one that created heavens and earth hallelujah he is the one that created the cattle and the, and, the, and the beasts of the field and the birds and, 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 and the oceans and guess what you know, I think about that song that I think her name is Nicole Mullen sing. You know, I mean, God created the, the oceans in that. But he told the ocean when it was being created, stop right there. Stop right there. I don't want you to come any further. Do you notice the ocean never come? Well, maybe sometime it will flood its banks, but it only can go so far. Why? Because God is in control, saints of God. God is in control, my God. We serve a big God. We serve a great God. We serve a God that, if we say, Dad, can you help me out here? He's omnipresent, y'all. He's everywhere on the first of the earth. He's over in Africa right now. He's right here in Evangelist Crusaders Church. He's down in Florida. He's everywhere. See, the devil can't travel everywhere. He got to pack up his bags and get on American Airlines or maybe Delta or whatever, uh, Southwest, and he got to fly out there. Or maybe I'll, I'll do this. I'll say this. He has to walk. That's a long hike. I don't know, maybe California's like maybe 2,000 miles or something like that, but get to stepping. And we got to tell him to get to stepping. We got to tell him to get out of our way. We're on a mission for God. And God said it. I believe it. And that settles it. Amen. We have to. We have to at all costs. If you want to be beat down and oppressed, then you listen to the devil. But we don't want to be beat down and oppressed. And God doesn't want us to be beat down and oppressed because he has said, he's spoken the word and told us what he's going to do. And then you may say, well, I don't know the voice of the Lord like that. I don't know the voice of the Lord like that. Well, I believe 
that your conscience will tell you to do what God wants you to do. I'm not saying it's the voice of the Lord, but if the, the, if the conscience tell you, here you're going to get ready to commit a crime, and the conscience is saying, no, don't do that, it's wrong. Well, that's what God wants you to do, not to do that particular thing. Because your conscience will be your guide. And God has given every man, woman, child, unless there's a, a, a disableness, you know, a conscience. But that voice that tells us, no, nah, God didn't really say that. No, nah, uh-uh, you know God ain't going to do nothing like that. He can, but he won't because you did this and you did that. That's the voice of the devil. He's, he's, the Bible says he goes to and fro this earth as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Guess what? He's already got the people outside of God. So you know what? He already got them, so he's taking his time to attack the people of God. See, he got them out in the world. And that our position is to believe God for their souls. Our position is to not talk about them or put them down. Our position is to show Christ at all times. And there's been times that I wanted to say a thing or two, but I had to represent the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And wherever I go, I try to represent him and let my light s- shine, even though, even though there may be some things going on in my life. Maybe I'm going through some hurt, but we have to trust God over that. Amen. So Jeremiah, he, he's trusting God who made the heavens and the earth and, and, and the God who wonderfully, you know, just carried, you know, his people through in that, you know. So he's trusting God. And so, and he obeyed God. So I just want to share to you, the city was restored, and there is nothing wrong with going to God and asking God if you have a question and you felt like you made a wrong decision, even though you know that he told you, there's nothing wrong at all with asking God, well, why God or You know, we don't question him, but we go to him and we say, God, I think I made a mistake. Did I really hear you? If you have a doubt or a question, talk to the Lord about it. That is what he wants us to do. Let's be like Jeremiah. Even though there was a war going on and chaos was happening, he still did what he was supposed to do. It was the right thing to do to listen to the voice. He obeyed the Lord, but he admitted his doubts taking them to the Lord. He told the Lord. So let's not act like, okay, praise the Lord, hallelujah. If you got that doubt in your heart, take it to God. God already knows. Hallelujah. So take all your questions to God. Trust the Lord, amen. Communicate with God. Tell him all about your trouble. Just open up to God because he's not there to beat you down. He's there to help you, amen. He will communicate back with you. I mean, have you ever heard the voice speak out loud, audibly? Yes. Some of us have, and maybe all of us have. But he will speak back to you. I want you to be encouraged. Now, at this time, after this is happening, God is delivering, he will deliver them out of judgment. But Jeremiah was still in jail during this, 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 other, you know, this other time. And so that's when God spoke to him. Sometimes when you're in the valley, when you're in the valley, you got to talk to God. Amen. So all the time you don't want to be on the mountaintop because if you're on the mountain, it'd be good to be on the mountaintop. But if, if when you're on the mountaintop, everything is going great. Everything is going good. I mean, you ain't going through no testing or no trials or nothing. But when you're in that valley, you can learn something in the valley. It helps you to be stronger, and it helps you to stand tall, especially when you're trusting God. And when you're trusting God, you go, wow, God brought me through that. That's why we all have testimonies, because of God. He brought us through that, so we grow by our tests, and that's the way it was supposed to be. We grow by them. You know, and then we just keep climbing and going. See, people don't want to go through, but we, it, we must go through. I mean, it's a big world out there. I mean, you've had, been through some things and done some things. Our mission is to go into the highways and byways and compel unto men and women to come unto Jesus Christ. Our mission is to pray each other through. 
Our mission is to pray for the unbeliever. Our mission is to believe God that he will deliver the drug addict. Our mission is to believe God that he will deliver the alcoholic. Our mission is to believe God for their salvation. Not to stand and discuss them and talk about them in a negative way. Because we've been there too and God forgave us. Something happened recently in my life when I realized that God had forgiven me, so I had to forgive others. And it, uh, I forgave to a point where others looked at me like I shouldn't have forgave. But I had to represent who was in my life and who was is the head of my life and forgive and trust God. So, you know, they did me wrong. But God helped me to get through with this. I'm so tired and I'm stressed out. I keep repetitiously going through this and this is just too much. I'm having problems. I can't pay my mortgage. I can't, I can't get a car to get to work. I, can't, I don't have no food in my cabinets. I, I need a place to live. God will provide. He is Jehovah Jireh. He's not going to leave you and neither is he going to forsake you. And it's okay to give God a round of applause. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I just want you to know the moral of this story is that the city eventually was restored. And you have faith in God. Don't be detoured from that. Amen. Don't let situations get you down because God is in control of our lives. He is. Don't let the situation hold you back. God is in control. And wow, when I think about it, just before I close, probably in a minute or two, um, I remember I didn't, I had to move from a particular house, Reverend Maria. I had six children and was seven months pregnant with the seventh one. I had nowhere to go. And I purposed in my mind, I was saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. And I said, well, I felt God was with me, but my own thinking was, I'll get a hotel, and I'll just pack as much as I can in this hotel room and just have all my babies together. I didn't think about foster care. It, that wasn't even an option for me. I didn't think about trying to do it on my own but that, you know, get this hotel room. And I tell you, it was just a few days before I was riding down the street, and I saw this house, Reverend Shirley, and it was the biggest house on the block. And I need, because I was getting ready to have seven children, and I needed this house. I, I took the phone number down. Before I took the phone number down, I jumped out the car, and I ran up to the door, and I saw the front porch, and it was a cement porch. And, you know, it, I didn't have to think about wood or anything, you know, repairing the wood. It was a cement porch. I just put some carpet over the, the cement, right? So I took the number down, and I called the um, the owner to the property, and he said, sure, sure, and I just felt God 100%. I said, well, and I didn't want him to know that I was pregnant, so I met him at the house, and um, I was trying to hold my stomach in when I got out the car, but you know, seven months pregnant, that's impossible, <laughs> you know? <laughs> you have an eight, nine pounders, you know? <laughs> and so um, I got out here. First thing he noticed was, he said, you're having another one? And I said, yes, I am. And then I just straightened up my back. It is what it is. Either I'm going to get this place or I'm not going to get this place. I still got a hotel that I'm going to go to. So um, he rented me the place, and he was the nicest man ever. And it was like two days before I had to be out that I got the house for my children. And I was there for 24 years. I didn't have to bounce my children around everywhere, school to school, house to house. You know, I didn't have to do that. It, but it looked impossible for me. But God took care of it. Don't worry about it. Don't stress out. Just walk in the promises of Almighty God. Amen. Walk in the promises. Trust him. And don't be detoured from what he has said. Read the Bible. This is where we get our strength. Pray. That's where we communicate with God and get our strength. God bless you. To some of you out there that don't know what my sister was talking about, Trusting in God. Today can be that day for you. The Bible says that today is the day of salvation. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, it's real simple. He's wooing and he's calling and he's, he's, he's letting you know through the word of God. He's letting you know through different things that happened to you this week. 
that he loves you, and he wants you to be saved. He wants you to have that assurance, that blessed assurance that you too can trust in him, believe in him, can have eternal life. We don't want to be left down here and where people are worried and they don't know how to get in touch with God and they don't know how to pay their bills and things. To even get food, the bare necessities. But we want to be those ones that call upon the name of the Lord and he answers us, he hears us, and he comes for his children. He saves our soul from sins, he cleans us. And he makes us whole. And he'll come back for us and take us home with him. How many of you want to know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? How many of you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? For those that would like to Enter into a covenant with Jesus Christ. Bow your heads. And those that know Jesus right now, you help us. Help us pray with this individual that wants to know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Let's bow our heads and let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I've sinned. And Lord, I, I want to know you. I want to be saved. I want you to come into my heart and cleanse me, Lord, that I may be your child. And Father, I surrender my mind, my body, my soul to you, and I turn my back on sin. I ask, Lord, that you forgive me Come into my heart, save me, make me that new creature in Christ Jesus. Now, if you've done that, you believe God. He has made you a new creature in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. You too can have salvation. You too are born again Christian, you too don't have to worry. Hallelujah. 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 God is good. It's just that simple. Glory to God. Uh -huh.